are amazing animals. And we are going to start today with our raccoons. Now, raccoons are nocturnal animals, which means that they are more active at night time. So we are very, very lucky if we get to see them during the day. Now, you guys are lucky to have a keeper here today with some food, so hopefully you will see some of the raccoons during our talk. Now, here at Chesington, we have six raccoons, and they are all named after an American state. So we have Jersey, Dakota, Florida, Indy, which is short for Indiana, Cali for California and Minnie for Minnesota and they are all female raccoons. Now as we said they are nocturnal so they're more active at night time than they are during the day and now because of that they do have excellent night vision. Now their night vision helps them to look for food when it is dark in the evening. <laughs> I'm not having that trouble right now. <laughs> now, raccoons are omnivores, which means they eat both plants and animal matter. And they do eat many, many different types of food. They can eat anything from nuts, seeds, berries, fish, shellfish, crabs, frogs, mussels, rabbits, mice, even bird's eggs. They eat loads. Now, what you might see them doing is taking their food and washing it in the water. Now that's actually not to clean the food as you might expect, but instead it's to get a good feel for the food. So what they do is they remember what the food feels like and then that helps them to find the food again when they are foraging the next again evening. Once again, obviously they're foraging for food at night time so it is dark and they're using their receptors in their front paws which have very, very strong um, and they're even stronger underwater, which is why they will take the food there to wash it and see if they can recognize the object. Now the raccoons that you can see here are northern raccoons. And they can be found anywhere in Northern America, Central America and Canada. And they can thrive in a variety of different habitats, <laughs> from grassy plains to forests to woodlands. But they can also thrive in urban areas too. Now it is of course in urban areas where they are considered a pest. Which is one of the unfortunate similarities they have with our skunks. Now boys and girls, you might be wondering why do we have the skunks and raccoons living together here at Chessington? And that would be a very good question. Well the answer to that is that they would live together harmoniously in the wild. So that is something that we have tried to replicate for them here at Chessington. Now if you have a look just round to this side of the enclosure, to your right, you'll see we have a family of four striped skunks. We have mom, dad and two little offspring, so their names are Flash, Storm, Monsoon and Breeze. And they are a family of striped skunks, which is a species native to North America. Now, skunks are most famous for their defence mechanism, which sprays out a foul swelling liquid. I'm sure you're all sure aware of what I'm talking about. Now, the liquid smells incredibly unpleasant, and it has a chemical called sulphur in it. Now, that chemical is an irritant, and it can also cause temporary blindness. So it can be pretty serious stuff if you get sprayed. Now, our skunks here at Chesington can spray, and they have done in the past. It smells like a combination of burnt tyres, spring onion, and garlic. And it's so powerful, they can spray it up to 10 feet away. And so strong, boys and girls, that you or I would be able to smell it from a mile and a half away. Yeah, you heard me right, a mile and a half. It's super strong stuff. And it does actually take them between 10 to 12 days to replenish their stink supply once they have sprayed. Now, all of this might sound really aggressive, but it's not actually an attack. It's used as a defense mechanism, so it's always a last resort. And the skunks will do other things to warn off predators before spraying as their last resort. They tend to perform dance-like motions to warn off their predators instead. However, they will not run away from a predator, which is how they often end up as roadkill. Now, a predator is an animal that eats another animal, its prey, for food. So, some examples of predators of the skunks would be foxes, bobcats, coyotes, maybe even large owls. And a fun fact about the skunks is that they are actually immune to snake venom. So, they can eat venomous snakes. 
They also eat strange things like honeybees and wasps. I know, <laughs> not what you would expect, right? <laughs> Obviously, here at Chesington, they get a very, very diet. Um, but in the world, that is something that they would be after. Now, there are a lot of threats to our skunks in the wild. For example, in the early 1900s, they would be poached for their skin. Now, thankfully, demand has decreased. It decreased about 1950s, 60s. I mean, sadly, some harvesting does still continue today, but um, nowhere near as much as it used to. Now, they are also threatened by severe weather, predators, disease, exposure to chemicals and other human activities. So what can we do to help? Boys and girls, the answer is really, really simple. We can reduce, reuse and recycle in that order. So we can reduce our waste. We can choose to use reusable options instead of single-use plastics. We can choose to recycle an object that might be at the end of its life cycle instead of throwing it away. By choosing reusable options such as you know plastic bottles, plastic cutlery, plastic bags, by using reusable options instead we're cutting back on our plastic pollution. We can also use less fertilizers and chemicals when we're caring for our gardens or lawns at home to help keep our water sources healthy. Now what about their friends the raccoons? What can we do to help them? Well luckily they're um, they are considered of least concern, but basically what that means is that their population is increasing. Um, they're very adaptive and they can thrive in many, many different circumstances, which gives them a better chance of survival. Obviously, they do still have some threats out there in the wild, similar to the skunks, habitat loss and water pollution. So we can do exactly the same thing to help them as we would with the skunks. We can reduce, reuse and recycle boys and girls. I will leave you to enjoy all of the animals that Amazoo has to offer, but myself and my colleagues will be hanging around for another five minutes. If you do have any questions, do feel free to come on over and we'll do our best to answer them for you. We do hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye!